The big one to really kind of drive home about this game in particular is it is David versus Goliath. The elephant in the room, everybody thinks Empire is going to win. That's the way that it looks like this one is going to go. The story is insane. The, the invited team versus the team no one thought would make it this far. We're trying to finally understand whether these guys have what it takes to play with the big boys. For us, it was like we were the last hope to sort of go, hey, don't count APAC out yet. We're still working through it. I hope that this event has been an eye opener for APAC that if they're not doubling down, then we might not be able to be the only one holding on to them for long. Joystick falls, oh. it's only one left. They said it couldn't be done, but as Dan trudges on in through the smoke, one HP, he's got three kills to find, and it's it's Dundee, it's Crocodile Dundee, Michael. Oh my goodness, I can't get over this. Pengu's there, Lusty gun out, some damage done to the Goyo around the corner. Who's better? Lusty is, and Fnatic is the first team to take out G2 at the Six Invitational. Oh my, my goodness, God, God Magnet. In they go, right behind the Clash as well. And they can defuse from it. Does he have the angle to kill? Yes, he does! Down goes the Clash, but at the same time, out comes the last man alive for BDS. What the hell is that? In the playoffs of this year's R6 Invitational, Fnatic stood alone as the sole APAC squad amongst many EU, NA, and Brazilian teams. For us, it was like we were the last hope to sort of go, hey, don't count APAC out yet. We're still working through it. Compared to other major regions, APAC has always been considered weak in Siege. Coming up against Fnatic a reach from APAC, a region that without really shaming anyone too hard, probably isn't one of the more competitive regions around the world right now. Despite coming from a weaker region, Fnatic has always managed to play well against other powerhouse areas of the world. Now, the only team I think you will find across the entirety of the roster of teams that are here at the Sixth Invitational, where every single player has a positive KD. Yes, they're a good team. They're on a region, again, where a lot of the teams around them are nowhere near as competitive as what you will find elsewhere, but you definitely can't dismiss them as being a bunch of good players. From an outside perspective, an APAC team making it out of groups might seem incredible, but Fnatic always had bigger goals than that. I think, like you said, consistency for us is a double-edged sword. We've had that consistency in terms of we always qualify for the events and if people go, well, you know, you go through APAC, that's expected. But through the Invitationals, I think consistently we also have extremely tough groups. And that's where Mentalist and Tex come in. There have been two major changes to our team since uh, everyone has last seen us compete. We have Tex and Mentalist. Tex is fulfilling a flex fragger role, while Mentalist is sort of fulfilling more of a support flex role. They have been fitting in really well for our team and definitely in my opinion, I believe this is the strongest Fnatic lineup yet. Despite a new buffed up roster with Mentalist and Tex, Fnatic were still giant underdogs coming into the invitation. The big one to really kind of drive home about this game in particular is it is David versus Goliath. The elephant in the room, everybody thinks Empire is going to win. That's the way that it looks like this one is going to go. And I can't say that I'm any different, but you know what I mean? Fnatic might just have a little surprise up the sleeve here. While Fnatic lost to Empire, it was all a part of their risky plan. A plan that nobody expected a team to try at the biggest tournament of the year. So our first game in our group was uh, against Empire. Um, we're kind of playing a Long Kong game for uh, this match. Uh, first we lost to Empire. Um, we knew they were very strong on bank. So as soon as we lost that map on coastline, uh, we we knew that uh, we were probably going to lose the, the rest of the match. Our goal was to not show much so we can win against FaZe or Dark Zero. But in the deciding match of their group stage, Fnatic got revenge on Empire and knocked out the Russian favorites in what's arguably the biggest upset in Siege history. And they did it in their own unique style. Joystick falls, oh. it's only one left. They said it couldn't be done, but as Dan trudges on in through the smoke, one HP, he's got three kills to find, and it's it's Dundee, it's Crocodile Dundee, Michael. Oh my goodness, I can't get over this. Fnatic will stun everybody watching in utter disbelief. Empire goes out in groups. An absolutely, as you said, stunning victory for Fnatic. They take a 2-0 over Empire. But Fnatic weren't done yet. Next up, they had to beat one of the most dangerous teams in Siege history. 
G2, obviously, they've struggled a bit in the recent past. These are the guys that were two-time Invitational Champions coming into this with the invite of all things because for some reason they've just been struggling so much they can't make it. But you know why they get the invite? Not just because they're the reigning champions of the, of the invite, but also because they show up at land. Sure, G2 had a rough few months, but they were still back-to-back -back SI champions. Pengu and Fabian had never lost a match at the Invitational. If Fnatic weren't careful, they could be thrown straight to the loser's bracket. But Pengu's there, Lusty got out, some damage done to the Goyo around the corner. Who's better? Lusty is, and Fnatic is the first team to take out G2 at the 6 Invitational. After repeated top 8 finishes, Fnatic finally managed to break the top 6, beating two of the game's greatest teams along the way. Sure, they weren't able to advance to the top 4, but what Fnatic accomplished is crazy for an APAC team that made roster changes less than 3 months ago. They're not losers, even though they lost. This team, they're really good. I really love the team change that they had, bringing in Tex. Mentalist did a fantastic job. But looking into the future, what's the expectations for this team now that they've made it this far in six Invitational? Looking forward into 2020, I think we expect them to remain the number one APAC team and potentially push internationally further for those championships. Just because Fnatic had an incredible Invitational run doesn't suddenly mean APAC is going to be some great region. But Fnatic showed the world that there's hope, that with all of the resources Ubisoft is pouring into the region for year five, one day an APAC team could also raise that hammer and be called champions. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.